Welcome, welcome everyone to our bonus guest expert interview for this month. Uh, let's see, what is the date? It's April 27th, 2021. And uh, my dear friend, keto expert Kim Howerton has been doing a really cool uh, self experiment. And it's the information I just had to share it with you all. So I wanted to I'm so grateful she said yes when I invited her to come on and share what she's been doing because uh, she could just keep all these secrets to herself. And um, so uh, welcome, Kim. Um, first off, will you just tell a little bit of your backstory? I met Kim probably probably almost six years ago now. Was it at the first low carb conference in San Diego? I don't probably, remember. Probably thought maybe five. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Plus I, I've been keto for about five years, so that's why I think it's probably more like five. Um, okay. I am a keto coach and I am somebody who has gone through my own sort of keto journey um, and found that I was a life coach actually before I found keto. And when I went keto, what I found was it was such a pivotal transform life transforming piece that I really felt like I had to sort of turn my skills and attention to uh, helping people on their keto journeys. Um, and so that's what I did. And, you know, but just like a lot of us, right, we're, we're on our own journey as we're on a journey with other people. And so there have been twists and turns and things I've learned along the way that I didn't know when I first started. And, and so um, it's always evolving. Oh, that's so great. Would you, would you mind sharing a little bit more of like pre keto, like weight journey sure. struggles, just so that the ladies who are watching will be like, Oh yeah, she gets where we're at. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I, I mean, I usually say like, I was not like when I was uh, designed, they, they forgot to put in the easy button. Um, you know, like everything was hard for me, especially mm. around my health, my weight. I actually had my first surgery when I was five years old oh and my I've had, yeah, I've had not surgery, uh, not weight related, but like I've had a bunch, I've had like over three surgeries, major surgeries. I've had a lot of health issues. I had PCOS, I have hypothyroidism, um, chronic depression. Like I have had a lot of health struggles. And when I, uh, before keto, I had been, you know, I'd been struggling with my weight since I was in single digit ages mm -hmm. and uh, had very early puberty. I'm tall, but you know, so I was tall, young, but I was also wide. <laughs> and um, so I struggled, you know, my whole life with feeling both like from an emotional standpoint of just like feeling comfortable in my body, but then also just literally like feeling uncomfortable in my body because my body was kind of an uncomfortable place to live. Um, but then in my late thirties, my weight just sort of accelerated. Mm -hmm. So I'd always been, you know, heavy, chubby, little big, but like, you know, unfortunately in today's society kind of average yet overweight. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, it felt like a big deal to me, but you know, when I go out in the world, I'm like, Oh yes, we are, you are my people. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and then I got to my late thirties and suddenly it was like, I was on the expressway to like bedridden obesity. And mm -hmm. I, I was just gaining weight at a more and more rapid clip. And I was like, I got to do something about this. You know, all my life it had been like, I got to do something about this. I want to look better. And then I just kind of hit a point where I was like, oh, I got to do something about this. Or I'm going to die mm. like that, like not tomorrow, mm -hmm. but like soonish, you know, mm. and not, uh, you know, sooner than I want to. Um, <laughs> and probably in a way that is more embarrassing and ego killing than I also want to, you know? And mm. so I just, finally kind of got my ish together as i say and and um it was like i should do something i should do something so i found a program that was in fact it turns out low carb but it wasn't mm. like keto mm. and it was very restrictive and it was very regimented and i am a rebellious sort i'm also a foodie and so i did lose weight but then i regained almost all of it mm -hmm. but in that time period i learned more about like what i could do to lose weight and i got curious about why that worked for me a little bit you know to be able to lose some weight and i found i found out about keto during that time it was sort of mm -hmm. like 2016 no 15 16 and i kind of learned about keto and i was like oh 
maybe. I mean, this scientifically makes sense to me. Let's give it a try. And I did, and it was it was great. It was amazing. I had big changes. I lost, you know, about 60 pounds in my first year. Um, with at, well, you know, I mean I was trying, but I wasn't like trying. You know, I wasn't like white knuckling it anymore. It was like it was just working. Um, and so that was amazing. And then, you know, roundabout though, year two and a half, three, like, you know, it was slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, stopping, regaining. Like, I was like, what is, what is going on here? So I had to kind of do some investigation around how I was approaching my approach and, you know, and what was and wasn't working for me anymore. Mm. Yes. And I think that, thank you for sharing all that. And I, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people are in the same boat. Like I'm seeing a lot of influencers coming forward saying, Hey, it worked really well. And now it's kind of like, mm, all right, confession time. Um, uh, you know, things are starting to slip yeah. and it's time to look at some other protocols. And, uh, I don't think it's any secret at this point cause she's putting it out on our blog, but we talked to, um, Christy Sullivan this weekend. Yeah. 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 Christy and she's been developing some higher protein protocols for mm -hmm. uh, diet doctor and also yeah. future cookbook coming right no, probably no surprise but but same thing for her you know lost a significant amount and then it stopped working and the weight gain starts and so she's at the same time you know so it's kind of this uh mass thing that's happening right now where people are looking at like yeah. all right it takes more than just one one diet. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I think, you know, I can totally get how frustrating the world is, um, mm. you know, for a lot of people. And this was certainly like my experience. When I mm -hmm. first found some success on keto, I felt like I found the holy grail. You know, I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. You know, I I'm not broken. This actually works. I can actually see progress. I'm not like, stuck in this body that that is is in pain and has to take all these medications and and then though a lot of people not everybody but a lot of people kind of hit a wall um at some point on their keto journey mm -hmm. and um i was not exempt from said wall and i had to really delve into what was going on and so that was about two years ago Okay. that um that that i was well the trouble started more than two years ago but about two <laughs> years ago i was like this is ridiculous mm. like like i'm not doing this again like the definition of insanity is kim howerton like uh. it was like you know they say like you keep you know you keep doing the same thing expecting different results so i just sort of embarked on some investigation i tried this i tried that i tried this i tried that and you know what worked what didn't um you know and interestingly things that I tried years ago that didn't work eventually started working. So it's, mm. there's a lot of nuance that I think we aren't looking at in the keto world. But the, the emotion that I see a lot of people struggling with, myself included, you know, the best way I can describe it is you, you get to a place where you almost feel betrayed. Mm, like I felt, yeah. I felt betrayed by my keto. Mm. That like I was, make, keto made me a promise. Yeah. that it was gonna work and then it stopped working and it's like what the heck and so yeah so i had to deal with that too just like that feeling of feeling mm. completely abandoned by the one thing that i had learned to begin to have fledgling hope in again and then it it, it dumped me well yeah and a lot of my ladies say things too like well if this doesn't work, then what, right? Like this right, is my right. last hope. And if this doesn't work, does that mean I just have to give up? Right, right, right. And no, the answer is no. I will go, I will, <laughs> too long, don't read no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, it's not as clear cut as we want mm. it to be. Yeah. yeah, right, right. It's not just simple as lower your calories some more, which is kind of leading into this yeah next topic right um yeah sure <laughs> lead the uh, way yeah um okay so well and i remember back it was probably about a couple of years ago where uh -huh. i know you've always been meticulous in your journaling and logging food and tracking and all that kind of stuff so this wasn't a matter of like 
Kim just got lazy or anything like that. But I remember For the you, most part. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, there's times I, I call it like you're taking a white water river rafting trip and there's times where we just want to enjoy the, the view. Like it's not rocky. We just want to coast along. So that's, I don't think that's lazy. That's just enjoying the journey. Um, but I remember you reflecting on the fact that at your, whatever the body weight was that you burn less calories. You knew you burned less calories than some other yeah. people that were your same body weight. Sure, and that was, sure. uh, that was frustrating, which I can, I can appreciate. Yeah. Like, yeah. It would be. So is that kind of where things started where, where you just were like, why am I, was my bar body burning less calories than someone else? Well, or? you know what? I didn't actually put it together. Okay. I, um, at that time, um, but in hindsight, uh, I think the issue was, I think there, there was a, a, a variety of issues that came together at okay. that moment, but I did, I got my resting metabolic rate tested at one point yeah. when I'd been stalled for like a year at this point when I got this done and it came back saying my resting metabolic rate was like a ridiculously low number, like, like, like half of what it should be. And, um, but it was so low that I was like, there's got to be a mistake. There's got to be like, that can't be right. Um, you know, one of the things that kept happening, it's funny, I've heard this story a few times from clients now, they kept coming back into the room saying like, you're asleep. And I'd be like, I am not asleep. Like my metabolism was so <laughs> slow no. that I was not, I was barely registering as having an autonomic nervous system. Wow. Like it was, and, and, and there, I think quite honestly, like, I think it was a little bit wrong, but mm. at the same time it could have been, and it wasn't, but it could have been a wake up call. But, um, what I eventually learned on my journey is, um, you know, when I first got into keto, I um, was told by many people uh, more keto knowledgeable than me. I'm not pointing a finger at Carol. She was not one of the people that told me this. Um, but, uh, and I don't know if you heard this, Carol. Maybe you Ooh, heard I can't wait too. to hear what it is. <laughs> and that hi, Rita. Wa Rita's, Rita's watching right now. Hi, Rita. <laughs> okay. um, that you can't, so there's something people call, and I don't like this term, but that starvation mode will only happen on a high carb diet. Mm, that you can't okay. eat too little on a ketogenic or low carb diet because your body fat will fill in the difference in terms of what you're eating and keep your metabolic rate up. I was told this. I was, I never heard that specifically, but I think I can see, I, I, I totally believe you, but also I can see where it's kind of implied, right? Like, right. Well, cause well, you don't need to eat a lot of fat cause the, it's coming from your body fat the weird ma body math. They would do about how like right. it still beats a hundred percent of your caloric needs. It's like, nah, okay. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So this, there's like, there's a Finney chart that kind of says, says it doesn't say what I said in words, but right. people use that chart to kind of say what I said. And yeah. people had actually said this to me, like, oh, you can't go into starvation mode. You can't eat too little on keto because of this. And then like, oh, I was like, oh, okay, great, super. What well, I'd also yeah. heard just in general that starvation mm -hmm. mode isn't even a thing, isn't no thing. matter what Well, and you're that's on. why I don't like the term because mm -hmm. it's not a good term. Mm -hmm. um, but there is something that is indeed a better term. It's sort of like when people talk about like, um, adrenal fatigue and really it's like, well, let's talk about like HPA access. You know, they're like, they're touching on something, mm -hmm. but the deeper thing is what you need to know. Yeah. And, um, and so there is something bodies do. Bodies are designed to do it. It's adapt. We are a adaptation machines. Um, we would not still be the dominant species if we weren't adaptation machines. That's what we do. We adapt you know, there's no meat. Okay. Well, we can survive on vegetables. Oh, there's no food. That's okay. We can turn our metabolism down so that we don't die. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so we're, we're designed to adapt. And, and so that's the truth behind what people talk about as starvation mode. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when you feed a body less and less, your body learns to survive on less and less. And so what had happened to me was I was eating less and less. Mm -hmm. 
and um, I wasn't losing any weight. And I, and I see this in my clients. I have a client right now who's OMAD, 600 calories a day, and is not losing any weight. I have a lady very close to the same. And, and yeah. uh, the first thing is like, well, make sure you're recording all your food. And she says, I absolutely am. And I'm like, okay. Right. Right. Uh, and there's a point at which him. a lot of people out there in the world will just call that person a liar. Right. right? They right. must be sleep eating. They must be, you know, X, Y. And I'm like, look, look, there's, there's one, one meal, meal going on. Like, like, I, there's not that, that many places to hide food here. Right. Um, right. And so, you know, what I ended up doing is talking to Robert Sykes. You know, you know, Robert, right? Yeah. 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 Savage. Yeah, and, before. um, Real quick, before we go yeah. there, can we kind of talk about like, what are the signs or symptoms that sure. someone has that lets them know that they're in metabolic adaptation, that their metabolic rate has slowed down in accordance right. with their low well, calorie I mean, eating? What I can tell you is the good news is we're all in metabolic adaptation. Okay. <laughs> so, so everyone at all times is experiencing this phenomenon. However, the effects of this phenomenon are different. Um, if you're somebody that eats a ton all the time, your metabolism has adapted to more calories. Mm -hmm. If you are somebody who eats very little, there you go. Um, it, it is just something that happens to everybody. Um, now it, it, it intertwines with other factors, how active you are, how, um, how not just how much how much muscle mass you have, how much you fidget, how much neat, how much eat, how much all mm -hmm. these things that are going on in your body. But one of the things that influences all of this is in the mix is under or overeating. Mm, okay. And, um, well, and, and I so, was referring more specifically yeah. to not just under. metabolic adaptation in okay. general, but the, um, the place you're at where you just can't lose yeah. any weight and you're eating very little. The uh, metabolic I brick like, wall. I call yeah. <laughs> I, so what I see in, in people, and let me know if you have more than this, but like I yeah. just see those are the people that um, they don't have that like amazing keto energy. They mm. feel cold all the time, especially like mm -hmm. their, their hands and feet are cold and yeah. uh, they just don't have a zip to get up and do any exercise or anything like that. Um, maybe even starting the point where they're starting to have a little bit of mental fogginess and. Totally. Those will happen. Okay. Um, anything they're also. also they're also okay. just like, you know, a lot of people are like, I feel like exercising when I, you know, I have, and these people never feel like, ex or rarely feel like exercising, right. you know, they just, their energy is not there. Um, some of them that's true. And some of them, they manage to feel fairly energetic. So there are always exceptions to the rule. Okay. Um, but ultimately I think the thing to really look at is, have you felt like in your weight loss, you've been hitting a brick wall for a long time. Okay. And when you start looking at your caloric intake, um, it's very, very low, not very, very high. And you're being honest with yourself. Like mm -hmm. you're not estimating, you're actually accurately measuring and tracking. And you're I probably, do, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, I do have both. I have clients that come to me that they're like, I can't figure out why I can't lose weight. And then when I start having them track and I usually get an email that's like, I have figured out why I cannot lose weight. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, okay, I, I had it. Um, but then I have others where like, they send me their logs and I'm like, well, yikes. Uh, that adds up to a very low amount of calories. Yeah. Um, and it's not, it's not 100% not all about calories. Like I, I just, it's not. It's not, it's just that calories are a unit of measure. And in this instance, they're a very useful unit of measure because they measure your uh, overall energy intake. Right, and, and um, I see this as a problem of most diet interventions out there that focus purely on calorie intake. Yeah, And, and yeah. a lot of the ladies I'm working with, I probably the same for you is that they, decades of following this diet and that diet that told them how many calories they could eat. And they followed that to every single calorie. And then their body adapted to whatever that calorie level yeah. was. And then the next diet, the only way you could lose weight is to eat less than that. Or once you hit right. a plateau on that diet, the only way to lose more less. is to back. Yeah. yeah. So you end up yeah. with 800 calories and then you end up with these crazy uh, HCG diets where you only eat 600 calories a day. Or five. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, on a special occasion, you get a green bean. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it's um, it's not so, and uh, and so yes, most of the women. I mean, quite honestly, I mean, let's be honest. Most women, period, have been dieting their whole lives, but most mm -hmm. of the women I talk to have as well, and um, and so one of the things that I really had to look at, because because it was like sort of a bell went off in my head, you know, when I was evaluating the fact that I've been told like, oh, this won't you know, happen on keto, you won't have this effect mm -hmm. of your metabolism slowing. There, there are some studies that have shown that keto can have some positive you know, increase in metabolism, uh, metabolic rate, right? Yeah. So yeah. that may very well be true, but you still can continually eat too little. And, um, and then the other part that I thought about, which finally was like a big, big light bulb went off is like, you know, when they say, oh, because this much of your body fat is now being used for energy for fuel, so that you're because you're burning it. And you're, that's why you're losing weight. That's true of every type of diet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's not like the, anyway. It's it's <laughs> true of every diet. If you've lost weight, you have. I mean, granted, you lose. You can lose muscle mass, but usually, when you lose weight, you lose some body fat. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh, that's not. That's not um, only keto. That yeah. <laughs> that there's body fat. And so it suddenly I was like, put the pieces together. Um, but, um, you know, definitely keto has many benefits in terms of like how much body fat versus muscle you lose and metabolic rate, like all sorts of things there. It, it hands down is still an amazing tool that I utilize in my life and in my clients' lives, but it's, it's, it's short sighted to not think you need to know anything beyond mm. eat low carb. Hmm. All right. Well, let's go back to the, to the Robert Sykes. Sure. So, which, um, yeah. Which, for Robert, those of you who don't know, Robert is a uh, uh, a young bodybuilder. Uh, used to live. In, I I know he used to live in the in Washington State. And where are they now? Mm -hmm. Arkansas, Tennessee. Arkansas. Like Arkansas. Okay. He's from Arkansas, so okay. they moved back to Arkansas. Um, uh, Keto Savage, aka Robert Sykes, that's his real name, um, is a good friend, and he is a, a bodybuilder, a natural bodybuilder. So he goes through these cycles of, you know, building more muscle, losing more body fat. You know, so uh, he and I were talking, and he told me about something called a reverse diet, and I was mm. like, "What is a reverse diet?" And um, it comes to find out that this is something that all bodybuilders have to do because he explained, um, you know, you go on what they call a cut, which you mm -hmm. can look at as a diet, what we often call a diet or a weight loss phase where they're trying to, they're preparing maybe for a show and they're trying to cut as much body fat as possible. So they'll be eating, you know, less and less and less over this period of time so that they can continue to drop more body fat. But at the end of their cut, um, well, there are two ways that bodybuilders do this. They either just go to town and gain like 30 pounds in three days, or the intelligent way they end a cut is like they will do something called a reverse. And so at the end of, so if you think of a cut as going sort of stair steps down in how much you're eating, a reverse is literally the reverse. It's stair stepping up to eat more and more so that you now have kind of reversed out of that significant deficit. And then they enter a phase that we would all call maintenance, which is they've gotten to a point where now they're eating quite a bit more and they're at a place where they're neither gaining nor losing weight and they're going to continue on that path for a while yeah. and then they might go into something called you know a bulk when they're trying to put on a bunch of muscle where they're actually increasing the amount they're eating above maintenance in order to add more more body mass so he explained these phases to me okay and he he suggested that i try a reverse diet 
Which and you're is, like, I'm not a bodybuilder. <laughs> right? <laughs> not in any way. Well, not in any good way, anyway. Well, and, um, and, pro, and yeah. I'll just acknowledge some people listening right now be like, okay, so this isn't me because I don't want to lift a bunch of weights. But wait, right. hold on. <laughs> don't do leave. <laughs> um, because the concept actually applies to everyone, not mm -hmm. just a bodybuilder. Now, bodybuilders are really good at it because they're kind of machines and they have to make this work. This is their career. Um, but what he explained was adaptation. And mm -hmm. if you've adapted to very, very low intake, you know, I, I explain it this way, right? You're, if you're in the, or if you're already in the basement, our only options at that point to get you down below ground floor is like to pull out a jackhammer, which, you know, is like lopping off some body parts, right? Like <laughs> we are now it is going to be really challenging to get you any lower. Whereas if we're on the third or fourth floor, well, we can just take the stairs down for a little while again. And so you can kind of think again, that stair step idea, a reverse diet is, is acknowledging you might be in the basement. Now you don't have to wait till you get to the basement, but most people's first reverse, they're in the basement. Okay. And then how do I get out of the basement? How do I get enough height here um, so that I can see progress again. And so, you know, the trick is in a well-controlled reverse, you have to be well-controlled, which means you're not binging. It's a very uh, just like well-nuanced program where you're going to be eating a little bit more and then a little bit more and then a little bit more um, in an effort not to just because if you're eating 900 calories and then tomorrow you start eating 1800 calories, you're going to gain weight like there's no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But if you, I, and I know this sounds crazy town, people, I get it that this is not your experience, but if you do it properly, you can get from 900, 1200 calories up to 1800 calories and not see any significant weight gain if you do it gradually. Mm. You will see but a little. Everybody's in a hurry. We need to do this right. tomorrow. <laughs> right, right. And if you've been dieting most of your life, a mm -hmm. good reverse might take six months. Okay. That's good for people to hear. Let's just repeat yeah. that. Yeah. It's going to take time. If you've been dieting for 30 or 40 or 50 or 60, 60 years, can you give yourself six months to give yourself some metabolic healing and reverse right. metabolic adaptation? Right. Uh, it kind of like uh, the thing I would like to remind you of if you're this person who's like, I cannot do something that's going to take six months. I got to get this taken care of. They've installed for two years. Mm. I would like you to evaluate that thought process because there is what is this parable? Like Stephen Covey used to tell this story. Do you know the saw story? Uh, no, I don't think so. But maybe once you say it, I. So this guy comes across, I'm going to gonna botch it but you, you'll get the idea so this guy's walking in the forest and he comes across a lumberjack who's sawing trying to saw down a tree okay and he looks over and this guy is just like going at it and going at it and go and like there's no cut is happening in the mm. tree and the guy was like dude you have to sharpen your saw because your saw is not cutting and the lumberjack says i'm on a deadline i cannot stop to take the time to sharpen my saw because I'm on a deadline. And the guy's like, well, but you're gonna miss your deadline because your saw is doing nothing. And he's like, I cannot stop. So it's the same mm -hmm. thing. Like ladies, gentlemen, what you're doing, if it's not working, it's probably worth the time to fix it rather than to just keep, I don't know, beating your head against a wall. Mm. Oh, this is so powerful. I know because uh, so many, so many people think that they're broken and yeah. they do keto and they're eating 600 calories a day and they're like, okay, see, even keto won't work for me. Right. And it's not, it's not that it's, uh, we've yeah. got to heal the body a little bit, or at least it's not even about healing, right? It's actually the amazing machine. The body is the fact well, that I we mean, live on that little. Yeah. And it could be a multiple multiple things, right? Because one of the reasons could be your thyroid is wacky. It mm -hmm. could be 
you know, you have zero testosterone. But mm. let me tell you, if you're eating 600 calories, your thyroid is going to be wacky and you're going to have very little testosterone. Yeah, so yeah. you might be able to heal some of the hormonal imbalances just by properly nourishing yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you can also address along the way, maybe there are some things like some supplements or some treatments that you need to do to address some specific things that are going on. But it's like, if you're, if you're not nourishing your body properly, nothing's going to work well. Anyway. Yeah. 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 So it only goes to uh, reason then that there's going to be a lot of long-term consequences or even like a, a bunch of other symptoms that somebody's going to be having at that stage, like hair loss and, yeah. skin issues and hormonal issues and all kinds of stuff if you're sarcopania you know things like that yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah oh wow so can you share a little bit more then about like so as you started to so yeah um, so i digest uh keto savages um advice information yeah what how'd you sure. start to apply that like, yourself uh, i actually was like i'm taking a year off i'm okay. gonna stop trying to lose weight for a year now i think some people six months might be enough but i was just like go a year let's do it so i just took my brain like i was like we are not trying to lose weight mm. we're just not and i just thought well what do i need to eat to be properly nourished mm. you know looking at micronutrients macronutrients how is my sleep how's mm. my stress like mm. how is everything working in my life and decided to focus on health instead of just fat loss and over that year kind of went from probably about 1100 calories a day we you know there were exceptions i will say like i didn't gain weight on 1100 calories a day what would happen is i would eat that way for weeks at a time and then i kind of get a little screw up moment and i want it i want to go off keto but i would i would eat more for a week or two or three weeks and and but i would I would do that thing where you went from 1100 to 2000 and I would gain two pounds there. And then I gained another. And so I had gained some weight that I didn't want to have. And, but then I went back to 11 and I wasn't losing weight. And so I, um, I ended up walking my way up to about 18, 1900 calories a day on average over that year. And then I was interesting was uh, about, a year ago, we were about to start the shelter in place order. Um, it was a little more than a year ago at this point, a year and a month. And I was like, now seems a good time to implement the cut. Okay. I'm going to be at home. Yeah. I'm not going to be eating out. I'm not going to be traveling for a while. And so I started eating less again, in, but intentionally and consciously while keeping my protein fairly high at that mm -hmm. point. And um, I ended up going what I would call moderate fat, high protein. Although okay. I would shrug a little when I say high protein, I consider it higher protein than most than most ketoers were eating at the time, although it has caught on at this point. And so mm. it's now what someone might call protein-based keto or high protein keto or something like okay. that. Um, and so what I found over the next couple of months when I did that is I lost without much effort. Now, when I say without much effort, I missed butter, you know, um, you know, I mean, I still had some, but I missed sort of being liberal with butter. Um, we had a much closer relationship at one time. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so, and ribeye was less on the menu and flank steak was more and things like that. And I lost 15 pounds pretty easily, though, with just those changes. Um, and then I took my own advice and said, let's not keep doing this for a long time, shall we? And I did a short reverse, okay, um, more like three to four months reverse, and then a little while at kind of a maintenance level, and then uh, went into another cut phase and lost another 15 pounds. So over the last year, ended up losing 30 pounds. Um, I'm now in another reverse at this point um, with the desire to lose another 15 pounds in the next year. That is an amazing story. I just love how you biohacked your, your body and uh, 
how so how does it make you feel at this point like i know a couple of years ago you were just so frustrated with your body yeah. and you had pretty good health markers compared yeah. to some yeah. of us that weighed more less you know and <laughs> yeah my insulin was low i had mm -hmm. I had ketoed my way out of insulin resistance. I was insulin sensitive and stuck and not losing weight. And I was at that point, I didn't really care if I was insulin sensitive because I just wanted to lose weight. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, but when I came to my senses, I was actually glad that I am metabolically healthy mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of these things worked, but it does, I mean, that is to your point that, um, different seasons require different, you know, coats, right? Like yeah. when I was early in my keto years, um, I tried what some now would know more as the PE approach, mm -hmm. more Ted Naiman's kind of three to one or, or um, you know, it's very high protein comparatively to the fat approach. And, um, and I did not see real success there. I saw more success with more, I mean, not completely traditional keto, but a little higher fat than that. Um, and I really think it's a question of where you are on that insulin resistance sort of highway, you know, that's that spectrum. And so I think the right approach is very dependent on where you are on your journey. Do you think then, because PE, protein, uh, or the three to one um, yeah. is, you know, we three, grams, three grams right. of protein to one gram of fat. Yeah. Um, do, so I know that bodybuilders uh, use that technique, but based on what you said, that's like the very last maybe week or two that they're cutting, they're going to do that. They don't do that their whole cut. Well, I mean, it depends on the bodybuilder, okay. right? Okay. Some bodybuilders are high carb bodybuilders and mm -hmm. they're generally low fat bodybuilders, but somebody like, Robert is a keto bodybuilder, mm -hmm. so he's high fat the whole time, but uh, that's, you know, relatively high fat, oh. but the total amount of fat is dropping, but the total amount of food is also dropping. So yeah. you know, for him, his percentage that's protein, percentage that's fat are actually fairly consistent. It's the just the total calories that are dropping. Okay. But yeah, other, yeah, that's right. But other other bodybuilders will in their cut period, you know, you'll know them by the by the odor of broccoli and chicken breast, um, because that's all they're eating in their cut. Whereas they might be eating more fat and other carbs in their bulk cycle. Not this that is, I'm an expert on such things. This is so fascinating too, because I know there are people out there that think that Robert is lying about what he does. And it makes so much sense now what you're talking about. And I know that people are yeah. like, no, he's not really eating what he says he is. And it's just funny that everybody's got their little thing of like their little pet believes that like they look at their corner of the world of dieting, nutrition, health and weight loss. And like you said, like, you've got to start gathering all these other pieces of the puzzle because you and I have enough experience of, for ourselves, but also for everybody else we worked with. We know yeah. like one thing doesn't work forever and not all the way to goal and not all the way through maintenance. And um, that's a lot of times why people need a coach because they don't know what to apply or, you know, which tool do I use with that what? lug nut? Yeah. I've never seen that one before. <laughs> I don't know how to fix that. Yeah. 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 And yeah, and I know a lot of people would say that Robert is, but it's 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 hilarious because there is actually I have never met a more like earnest and honest person yeah. than Robert. And I've stayed in houses with him at various times. Like he traveled, like I will tell you the last time I stayed with him, right before the pandemic started, we were staying in an Airbnb. He traveled from Arkansas with a cooler of pre-packed food for the whole week because he is such a stickler about sticking to his macros during cuts and he was mm. in a cut mm. that he literally brought a check cooler of like bison so that he could have these very dialed in meals measured in and you know when you learn more about the the cycles of how he approaches it like he eats more protein than a lot of people in some seasons of mm -hmm. his time, but then in his cuts, he'll eat less. So, you know, it's not like he's not, you know, people people will look at a, a snapshot of time and think, oh, they do that all the time. That's not what's happening. 
not just speak for Robert. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm, I'm, as I'm as you're talking, I'm coming up with more questions. I'm trying to jot them all down so I make okay, sure. Okay, no problem. You get to. So the other question that came to my mind then is that um, so from what I've, you know, a lot of people I've talked to that have been on their keto journey and that have, you yeah. know, modified things, maybe got a little higher protein later on. They, there's still a consensus that early on, especially for very insulin resistant people that like high fat keto is very effective. Um, yeah. Do you think that, um, you know, the, the three to one approach, do you have a sense of, cause I know like, which, done, which way, yeah. Like, cause I know for me, like, I'm somebody who struggles with really high insulin uh, that, that uh, you know, despite doing all, you know, the right things, obviously there's more healing I need to do, but, um, but I could do a three to one and it was always very effective for me. It would rapidly lose right. weight. And that's, and that's and, what kind of tweaks the brain a little bit yeah, because it yeah. worked for you, but I have clients and in myself, it didn't really work well. Mm -hmm. And so I attribute that to the level of insulin resistance they have but maybe there are some other factors going on. You know, the good news is we have access to ourselves and we have yeah. access to food. And so we're all our own N of one and there's very little harm in trying a dietary approach for 30 days and seeing what the effect is so that you can decide where to go from there. So I'm just, just with all the information yeah. we, you know, discussing this here and our own journeys, I almost, I'm starting to lean towards the fact that um, just metabolic rate itself indicates how easy it is for somebody to lose weight or not, independent sure. of insulin. Now, insulin being high for somebody can make it so they've shut off their fat burning, like their body is like not allowing fat to come out of the cells. Right. Um, all that, all those, you know, enzymes and cellular membrane stuff and all that kind of stuff that needs to be made in order to burn fat for fuel has been shut mm -hmm. off in a lot of people. Ketosis is a way of insulin comes down a bit and then fat can come out and start to be burned and make ketones and things like that. Um, and for me, that was like a dramatic uh, right. energy coming online and all kinds of stuff. Right. But uh, my insulin has never been like even low normal. Uh, right. as far it's as, interesting like, world. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and, but I've always had a fairly high metabolic rate. Mm. And so any, I, I never really cut down, like even in my, um, first major keto weight loss journey, which the first six months of keto for me, I was probably around 1500 calories a day, uh -huh. um, which isn't really low. It's probably half of what I was eating before maybe, but I don't right. know. Um, and so I was able, I never went down to, you know, like only 1100 or 1000 right. or something like that. And then I kind of just ate whatever I wanted. So um, I didn't have that metabolic adaptation to a wow. lower level. So I wonder if that's more like, it's just kind of blow, blowing my mind too, because always thinking insulin was the key, you got an insulin low, right? <laughs> and um, metabolic rate is, is also got to come into play here. So I think it's a combination of factors. So you know, fat cell, you know, how you lose body fat, right? Your, your viewers probably used to this discussion, but you can kind of think that a fat cell has the, there are, there are two indoors and one outdoor, right? There, you know, you, you get like new fat and recycled fat in the fat cell. And then you've got, um, uh, lipolysis, you know, that fat being used for energy. Did you listen to Peter Atia's recent podcast about the fat flux? I did, I did, yeah, I yeah. did. And okay. so, so if you, you know, and I have the chart, he talked about a chart where it showed like where your mm -hmm. insulin is versus how much uh, lipolysis you could have. And I've had that chart for a while. Oh. Actually, um, uh, Ted Naiman actually put that chart up at some point about four years ago. And so I've had that chart in my notes. Um, and it does look like, and in my talk with uh, Ben Bickman on my podcast the other day, he even said, you know, when, if you're in, if you're fasting insulin or your insulin at any point is really above 10, you know, while it's over that level, that lipolysis is pretty slowed down or mostly hmm. stopped. Hmm. So it makes you a head scratcher a bit, right? right? Like, yeah. Right. Um, and so, it, you know, whether you're eating a lot or a little, you know, that, that, that door is supposedly not so open if you're if you're insulin resistant if you're fasting insulin is frequent is is regularly over that if you're not giving your body time mm -hmm. below that threshold um uh and so 
so there's that factor. And then the second factor, which they are, you know, all mixed up together, but, you know, but you have to think that if you're used to eating a lot and you're all, and you went through a period of time where those fat cells were getting more and more and more stuffed and you simply stop stuffing them as full, that will have an effect in and of itself. Mm -hmm. At least you're not going to be gaining more mm -hmm. weight. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, so that, that's one part of the factor. Um, but, you know, I think it's far more complicated than anyone really understands. Yeah. You know, you got the people saying it's all about insulin. You got the people saying it's all about calories. And I'm like, well, you're both right and you're both wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, I, in my opinion, you know, we all have our own is, is that, that there's something in the middle where we really need to be more, uh, where we need to live. That's one of the things I really appreciated about uh, Peter Atia's yeah. podcast was like, oh, finally, somebody's looking at, there's a lot of pieces. And he was the one, I was looking through my notes trying to find, because when you mentioned stress and sleep, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think there were a couple other ones that he mentioned as well that play into that whole picture yeah. of, you know, uh, what's going to affect your metabolic rate and fat, your net fat flux. Right. Um, and then if you, but, even if you listen to like people like Tommy Wood, he'll talk about um, that even things like, uh gut dysbiosis mm -hmm. can affect mm -hmm. insulin levels if i'm remembering correctly but mm -hmm. anyway but like all these different factors can come into play in terms of um you know what your insulin might be doing you know because some people will be like i eat zero carb mm -hmm. what is going on with the fact that i can't lose weight and my insulin's still high and you know sometimes it's about other things than what you put in your mouth yeah well just when we thought we got it it's, it's like it's like they say in any um niche of knowledge the more you know yeah. the more questions you have the more you feel like you don't know. <laughs> exactly. so it's exactly. a fun place to be i think actually because i gotta admit there was a place where i was just like all right i know it all this is boring i mean not that i got bored of helping people but it was just kind of right. like so uh i'm looking forward to you know, maybe next year when things open up and we can have conferences again, maybe we can actually have new topics to discuss and new controversial things about the higher protein keto. And, um, yeah. oh, do you remember back in the, you know, five years ago when there was the OKL, uh, the OK yes. living Church. and how controversial and they were? I am going to tell you that I was like, those people are bad. <laughs> they tell you to eat all this protein and that's so like, I mean, I'm going to say like, you know, I thank God somebody put out there that quote that, you know, uh, if you're a smart person, you can admit you're wrong. Cause I've had mm -hmm. to admit that I was wrong when I first started keto. And then I regurgitated a lot of information that I heard about keto. I no longer think that those things are actually true. <laughs> some of them. Uh, some of them. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I was right there with you. Like, oh no, those, I calculated my macros, OKL, and no, that's garbage. That's way too high protein. That's not keto. Those there was the the protein bros and the and the yeah yeah. I don't know yeah. something else rhymes with that. That's not very nice to say, but no. <laughs> I uh, I I don't know, but I mean, like you know, I will say that. Um, just because somebody finds value in eating in a different way than you do does not give you the right to be a dick. So, um, so, and so that goes on in this world. You know, I don't even like, right. Like there's a statement out there um, that's, you know, if you have body fat, if you have high body fat, you only need the LC, you don't need the HF, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. said that. And I would just like to say like, if you are working in the weight loss space, you have to be aware that you're talking to a population that has been bullied, demeaned, um, treated really horribly, maybe their whole life for their weight. Mm -hmm. And you have to think that their ears are sensitized to hear things in a much more aggressive tone than maybe you ever intended. And just you have to, you have to speak knowing that your audience needs to hear you. Like, it's not about creating the most brilliant sound bite where you sound so funny and, you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's such a like zinger. It's like, no, like, do you want to help people or do you not want to help people? Like, say it in a way that acknowledges that people have scars here. Mm. And I'm not talking about treating people like snowflakes. I'm talking about, you know, being like a, a decent human being. Yeah. I'm just going to say oh. it. 
Yeah. 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 Amen. <laughs> Thank you. That is a little soapbox for you. Amen, sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, so many more questions. I think that kind Rapid of fire. Yeah. So um have you so now that you've kind of like experimented on yourself with this, you're starting yeah. to do some of this work with your your clients, and what are you seeing yeah. that way? Uh I ran a, a gr I run a group called Keto Unstuck. Okay. Um, it, with the idea that um, essentially it's like if your easy bu button is broken, then you might need this. Um, and it specifically delves into some of these topics that I talked about today. Okay. And um, and it's a it works with people sort of like on an individualized kind of, you know, some people are this, some people are that. Like it it, it doesn't assume that I know what you need without some feedback from what from you. Um, and, and as I've worked with people through that program, I have seen in the last round, I would say of the close to hundred people in it, I believe we had four people that didn't see, um, some fat loss. And those are people that up at the beginning of the program, I said, I think you need longer than this program to reverse. Mm, mm, okay. Um, and not everyone in the program reversed, not everyone needed that, but okay. I did say to some people, this is going to be a longer process for you. And are you in or out? Because you have to, you have to buy in. If you don't buy in, you know, I don't, I don't I'm not going to force anybody. Yeah. 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 We'll have to keep telling that Stephen Covey story of the, <laughs> the saw. Stop, stop and sharp. <laughs> you have to stop, stop and sharp. Oh, I can't even say that. Stop sharpen. and sharpen the saw occasionally yeah. if you yeah. want to actually go faster. Um, yeah. This, this, uh, last night on a coaching call, one of my clients said this phrase that I'd never heard before. And I'm just in love with it is, um, the long way is the shortest way. Mm. Mm -hmm. So meaning if you're always trying to find shortcuts, it's going to take you longer yeah. than if you just go right. down the proven path. So this is true, right? Of what you're just talking about is the fact that like it, you know, stop trying to take shortcuts. If you can't lose weight on 600 calories a day, uh, you've got to stop and sharpen your saw <laughs> right? and so that you can meet your future deadlines because it's actually going to be faster than continuing to eat only 600 calories a day and not lose anything. So, Right. I mean, if you had told me in the midst of my lowest point of my stall, um, you know, hey, a year from now, you're going to lose 30 pounds in one year. I would be like, you're kidding. Like, yeah. that's, no. You're like, I'm not going to eat 300 I mean, calories a day. <laughs> Right. Like, and I, and I know for some of you, it'd be like 30 pounds is not a lot, Kim, but like mm -hmm. when you have not lost any weight really in years, it's a lot. Yeah, um, I know it is. Yeah. 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 That's, I say, I, I know it's a lot. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm down now a total from start of keto of around 85 pounds at this wow. point. So that, wow. yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and you lost a lot, but you gained more knowledge. So yeah, absolutely. That's, that's absolutely. Part, you know, so. if it was easy, I would be boring. <laughs> born again. Oh, no, that's different. <laughs> no, that's different. I mean, what would I, I would be like a lawyer? What would I have to do if, if everything wasn't hard for me, I'd have nothing to teach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love my, it. Yeah, my dad would like that if I was a lawyer, but you know. See, I, for, I got so in, engrossed in what we were talking about, I yeah. forgot to look and see if there's questions coming oh, in. Oh, were there questions? See, well, because we're broadcasting into our members' site. Okay. And those questions just come in by email, and I haven't seen okay. any other ones come in for that. And I'm getting, I'm getting a warning that, like, it's not broadcasting into the Facebook group, but when I look to the Facebook group, I can see us in there, so I don't know. There was another I lady. I hear Facebook's having weirdnesses today, Yeah, so. you know. Uh, I see us in there and, um, one lady I know was going to watch in one of those places and she's not the one she's not, it wasn't Rita. So hopefully okay. she can watch the replay of this too, but we'll be putting this out. You may be watching us on uh, YouTube at some point too. So give All us a right. comment. Tell us, tell us where, where, tell us your keto journey. Uh, and you know, what, where's, where's your brick wall that you've hit and how into the, how far in and, uh, do you wish you had an easy button, uh, and not just to go to Staples, <laughs> not, right? Not to get a fresh notebook. Um, it's like I press no. that easy button in Staples, and they give me like printer paper. I'm like, this isn't really what I wanted. Right. 
Oh, you're like yeah. I'm out of pens, not printer ink. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And this is so great. Um, yeah, I learned a ton, and I'm I just love this so much. I'm trying to think of like how to re recap. Basically, we talked about all this stuff, uh, your journey, um, yeah. and how you know hit a brick wall of you know no, seeing no weight loss for around four years, maybe, and just kind of the pieces of putting the puzzle together of figuring it out for you. And that involved um, getting some uh, metabolic adaptation in the reverse way, reversing the metabolic adaptation that you had that, that caused your metabolism to slow down so much. Uh, right. Learning from a bodybuilder, not necessarily that you have to do any weightlifting, but you can use the same techniques of uh, the weightlifting is great for all of us. So yeah, yeah. everyone should lift something heavy. Does this mean that's the next journey of Kim? Are you going to um, go into the I have been, No, I've been doing a little bit, a little okay. bit of resistance okay. training. But yes, in fact, my next, my next, I'm, I've been saying it and hopefully I won't be a liar. Um, I am actually currently thinking as the world is opening back up that I'll actually use the gym membership I pay too much money for. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That'd be great. Yeah. Well, and yeah. That fits with one of the symptoms being because I know before you were just not a fan of exercise. Like I was just like, nah. I just hate it. Yeah, and, I just uh, don't like it. Yeah. Uh, you know the theory of like, well, if your metabolic rate's high enough, you can't fight it. You gotta, you just yeah. want to go do something. So we'll see if yeah. if uh, Kim enters um, the keto savage uh, weightlifting team here soon or something. So <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think bikini competitions are probably not on the agenda. But hey. it would it would be nice to be able to keep up at least with my athletic boyfriend on the weekend. <laughs> there you go. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, and, and just for for fun or just more information, like so 30 pounds in the last year. Have you noticed yeah. anything else like anything else change for you? Um, health wise or related I mean, it's been to such journey. a weird year. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's been a really weird year. We I've noticed I'm right home a lot. Um, uh, you know, it's interesting that, you know, I'm a big foodie. I love food. Um, and I got a little weirded out. I've, I still loved food, but you know, part of what I do is I create recipes. And when I was in sort of the more intense cut periods, I wasn't that into recipes. I'd be like, mm -hmm. and then I put some cottage cheese in a bowl, um, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, um, and I was sort of almost like, oh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting less foodie. Mm. And then, uh, but in my recent reverse now that I'm in now, I'm like, and then I'll cook this and then I'll cook, oh, it's rhubarb season. So like that, that sort of interest yeah. in food is back. And so it's kind of fun to kind of have seasonality to that. Like be like, I'm in an eating season and then I'm in a cutting season. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's, it's probably gives people a lot of hope too, to know that like, oh no, you don't have to like diet forever. Um, that you can have these periods of enjoying some recipes and, and yeah. being creative in the kitchen. Cause I know a lot of my diet fatigue like, is real. Yeah. 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 Well, anything else that you want to share? Any other tips or insights you've gained? Um, I would say, I mean, there are a lot of people, like one of the keys to my success has really been getting really consistent with tracking mm. because it's really hard to adjust something if you don't have good data to mm -hmm. base your decisions on. And that tweaks a lot of people out. They don't like yeah. the idea of tracking. They like to fly by the seat of their pants. And I would just like to say that a period of tracking, you don't have to think about it being for life, but a period of tracking, um, a spot check, if you will, mm -hmm. can be very helpful behavior to give you the kind of feedback you might need to, to check. Right. Like I have people that come to me that say, I don't think I'm eating enough and they're eating plenty. And then I have mm -hmm. other people that say I'm eating so much I can't eat anymore and they're not eating nearly enough. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, if, if you're just going based on how you feel and not based on any measurements like that you can base in reality, not that your feelings aren't real, but like you need data. And so yeah. I would say, even if you hate tracking, try and find a place in yourself where for at least a temporary period of time, you can do it 
because you can't fix what you don't understand. Uh, that's so key. You're right. Like the whole foundation of all of this is that if you got to know where you're starting mm -hmm. and to do these stair steps, you have to track, you can't guess the stair steps and yeah. up yeah. or down. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's yeah. great. Very important. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, uh, what's the best way people can find you? Well, you can find me at kimhowerton.com. Uh, no crazy surprise spellings in that. Um, and you can also find me on social media at the ketonist, which is crazy spelling, but it's the ketonist, all one word, the ketonist. Um, it's a combination of keto and hedonist if anybody cared. Um, and then uh, if you are interested in my program for people that are metabolically confused, you can sign up for the waiting list at KU, the letter K, the letter U, dot Kim Howerton dot com. All right. Well, we'll put those links in the uh, in the show notes here. So Sounds good. Right, everyone, big round of applause for our guests. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks for teaching us all some valuable things and sharing your journey so that all the rest of us continue to heal too on our journey. So sounds good. Thanks, Thanks for, for being me, here. Carol.